What's up, divas? What's up, divas and divos? It's your girl. So you guys already know what time it is. It's Real Talk Wednesday. And I am excited to be back. Even though I don't go anywhere, you know what I'm saying? I'm always back. I always say that. But I'm excited to do Real Talk because I really do like to do Real Talk. You know what I'm saying? I could just chill. I could just be a potty mouth. I could just say what the hell I want to say. Even though it does not matter what video I do. I don't care if it's a wig video or a review. I'm going to say what the fuck. I want to say but I try to be a little bit with the less curses in the other videos you know so anyway you guys as you guys know I'm just gonna give you a little quick update okay so first of all when I did real talk last Tuesday I did tell you guys that I was going to the, the dentist that following day which was Wednesday because you know I do real talk on Tuesday so you guys can see it early Wednesday morning so I did go to the dentist at 9 a.m. Wednesday morning and I did not get out of there until 1 30 I was in there they was in my damn mouth for like four and a half hours and let me tell you guys it was the, like the worst time I have ever spent at the dentist office like on some real shit like seriously I had a root canal done I had two fillings done I had to also have an extraction done okay so my dentist wasn't there so there was an Indian doctor dentist that was there. And he was really cool in the beginning you know what I mean he um they found the root of the problem which was giving me like the worst pains ever and it wasn't actually one of my new teeth um it was um because you know it does still have its root it was another tooth um because I did get a feeling and it was so old the feeling like I probably got it when I was like a teenager that it was so close to the nerve that it was just like really really like aggravating it and it started getting um it started being aggravated that one tooth it was fine it never gave me no problems until I started getting like my new teeth and it's so basically the dentist said when I start getting new teeth and they start messing with my mouth it starts to bother my other teeth and the other nerves and so that's when I start getting like trauma to my other teeth so it really sucks because I want to get my mouth fixed and I am but it sucks because when I get one thing fixed sometimes something happens to like older teeth that have been worked on already and the fillings were like really really old so I had to get a root canal in that too and it just hurt so bad like when I say it hurt so bad I hadn't eaten in three days prior to surgery or to you know going to the dentist and it was just killing me I was on antibiotics I was on um, medication pain pills like opioids um, whatever it was called opioids is what they call it. it was norco i was on that and then um i got switched and i had ibuprofen 800 milligrams so the pain was like really really bad and i ended up you know going to the dentist and they gave me the root canal and then they also gave me the filling to fix this the tooth um that they dug the filling out of and um they also gave me another filling but um i still was feeling like pain on my bottom tooth and I know it wasn't like one of my back molars that I have a root canal and I have a crown over it was the one behind it the one further in the back that needed to be extracted like a long time ago but it wasn't bothering me though I thought it wasn't bothering me so it ended up started bothering me when I got the crown in the back here and same issue but it wasn't a tooth that you could really save um because the fillings were in it were so old and i had probably had that filling filled probably like three times so it was just like you can't fill it anymore so um i was novocaine up like three uh, three or four times on the top and then he decided he wanted to take out the bottom because i just could not go home like that and so he gave me some more novocaine you know he gave me some novocaine I think it was like three times, three, four times, and he went to, you know, see if the Novocaine, you know, had wore in, if I couldn't feel anything. Girl, let me tell y'all, when he started trying to pull at that tooth, I was like, please stop, okay? And so then he was like, okay, I'm going to give you a fourth shot. So this was the fourth one. And he said, let me let you rest for a second. So when it was time for him to try again, you know, the nurse, the staff, the hygienist, the dental hygienist, she on the other side with the little thing, little squirt thing with the cold water and the air pressure. Now, first of all, my mouth, my teeth are so sensitive. So when I drink anything cold, I always have to have a straw. And this is just not just, I have very sensitive teeth. So here she is. He's trying to dig and see if it's working. And she's 
got this thing and it's cold and it's giving me like all these chills and like shivers and like pain through my teeth because it's sensitive man it wasn't like done intentionally but you know it was him at one point and it was her at the same time they was just both like am i bloody come on come through come through um camera so it wasn't done like intentionally it was him on this side and her on this side and he was like like messing with my teeth and i could still feel it even after the fourth shot and here she is on this side now her shit was a little bit worse because it went to the whole fucking mouth from the top to the bottom it just was like a surge you know what i'm saying a pain and I had her, and I just took her and just, like, shoved her against the counter, like, you know, on the side there. And I was like, get away from me and stop it. And then him, too. So, you know, she didn't say anything. She just apologized. And at that moment of time, I could care less because I had already been in there crying. I was, like, crying because I was in so much pain. And also because you keep novocating me up and I started getting anxiety and I just started just like my heart started racing. And so he was like, basically, the dentist was like, I can't give you no more novocaine because it's not going to work. I'm going to get the other dentist. And he basically said, you know, that when your tooth is that infected, you it's hard for them to get it numb because it's just so infected so i didn't even know it was infected because it was never bothering me until i got this back to put it in like this one next to it. so anyway so i wait for the other dentist to come and that wait was like forever now mind you i had novocaine already so the little bit of novocaine that i could feel was starting to wear off and I, my mouth was just starting to hurt and it seemed like an hour that it took for the other dentist to come and it probably wasn't an hour it probably was like 30 minutes but it seemed like an hour and I was sitting there in tears crying because I couldn't take the pain anymore so the first doctor the Indian dentist he came and he was like you know I'm sorry for the way he'll be here in a minute so he comes a new dentist not the new dentist but the other one comes and he's talking to me and he's basically telling me like I'm gonna try to get this out you know if I can't get it out and I can't get you numb I'm just going to give you like some strong antibiotics so that way it'll take away the infection and then when you come back next week, you can get it taken out. And I was like, okay, because at this point, I just wanted to go home. I had already had a root canal, two fillings, and my mouth was so sore. I just wanted to go home. So I let him. He came back through, and he gave me four, was it four more shots? Four more shots of Novocaine. And the way he did it was like, oh, my God. Thank God I had a little bit of Novocaine to where I couldn't feel it. But let me tell y'all, it hurt so bad. Then he had to, like, he had to, like, Somehow he had to like shave away the tooth a little bit and then stick the needle inside of it and give me more Novocaine to be able to pull it out. It worked and I couldn't feel anything and then he started pulling at it. Okay, so why when he was pulling at the tooth to remove it? You know, I'm laying there and it felt like all this pressure. Like, I'm like, I felt like he was just like slamming me into the fucking dental chair to get this tooth out, you know, and it's by my jawline. He got it out. Let me tell you guys. You can't see it because my makeup is on, but my whole jaw was so sore and swollen. And then, like, a day or two later, I got bruises all right here from, you know, the pressure of him pulling at the tooth to get it out. Like, I'm glad that he got it out. I got stitches and I feel a whole lot better. But let me tell y'all, when I went home from the dentist, I had to go get medication. They gave me more um, pain relievers and a higher antibiotic. And um, first I had amoxicillin. Now I had um, clindamycin. I had clindamycin and norco like the opioid i had another prescription for that so when i get home i'm in so much pain like when i say so much pain i'm in so much pain i took the norco the, um the narcotic and um it didn't it didn't help at all i, I mean i laid on the couch just crying in tears i mean i that was like the worst experience then i took the 800 milligram tile um ibuprofen girl when that's that shit wore on. I was like, 
I was so happy and I felt like relief. I didn't feel the pain, but you know, of course it did come back. And I couldn't eat for like days. Like my mouth could barely open. I mean, I could eat like so, um, soup and ice cream and shit like that. It was just like the worst experience. And today is Tuesday again. And so my mouth finally started feeling like back to normal like um Sunday. It's been like hard for me and let me tell y'all she calls me the dental hygienist calls me Monday yesterday and she was like um because I'm supposed to go to the dentist on Wednesday again tomorrow which will be today when you guys watch this um for a checkup and I don't remember what else it was but I was supposed to go today Tuesday she calls me Monday and says you know just reminding you of your appointment I'm like for what because I was supposed to come back Wednesday and the guy told me he was going to check and see if I really need to come back on Tuesday because we have to give you a root canal and a crowning on your upper right on your upper left side I was like no I'm not coming I'm not coming she's just like why I said can we just put this off for like another two weeks please because my mouth is really sore um, I just got over this and I really don't want to um, have you guys dig it in my mouth right away just please so she said okay well you still have to come Wednesday just for a checkup like listen listen Linda listen I'm all for getting my teeth fixed I, I know this and I but that experience for me was like traumatizing I, I'm just like I have never cried so much at the dentist office. I've never cried at the dentist office ever until that time. Other than, well, let me stop lying because the first dentist that I met, not this dentist office, but the other dentist office that I originally went to, I, my very first visit there, I cried because he did my x-rays and that dentist had no bedside manner. Basically, he just was like, you know, your teeth are in horrible shape. And he, the way he said it to me, it hurt my feelings so bad. And, like, you don't tell anybody that. Who the fuck are you? You're old ass. Like, he hurt my feelings so bad, and I was in there crying. And his hygienist was like, you know, don't cry. He doesn't mean any harm. I'm like, bitch, you really don't know me like that. I'm about to smack the shit out of him and you, okay? After my feelings are not hurt. Like, after I stop crying, bitch, I'm about to fuck him up. That's how I felt. But, you know... She apologized. Um, I don't even remember if he apologized, but I do know that after that, after that situation, when I started coming back there, he was very nice to me. But they also knew I'd go on YouTube and tell a whole story about your motherfucker. So I think he was just really nice to me after that for those reasons. But I just stopped going in and went somewhere else. So. I mean, this office is really good. It's not their fault that my feelings are the way they are or that you couldn't get my tooth out or get me numb, but it was like a really bad experience, like, as far as pain, and I just, I just didn't like it at all, like, seriously, so, yeah, did not like it at all. But other than that, I mean, like, you know, it's cool. Today, my son, my middle son, Wuzzle, he turned 20, 20 years old. He is 20 today, the 12th of June. And then my sweetheart on the 15th of June, my late dog, Coco, he will be, he would have been 12. Um, he passed away this past November. And then a bitch is going to be 44 years old next Tuesday on the 19th of June. So, my birthday is next Tuesday. Don't ask me what the fuck I'm going to be doing because it's probably going to be nothing. Um, I don't really do shit on my birthday. I, I do go to Bath and Body Works on my birthday because I always get gift cards for my kids and stuff. So, I definitely will do that. Even though I went the other day, I only bought like two lotions and two shower gels. Everything else was like strictly nothing but all candles. Like... I don't know. I'm not like I'm over the lotion, but I got enough, like for real, that will last me until Christmas when the next semi-annual sale comes. And everything that they had was not like so impressive. Like I already got all of this shit. So like y'all ain't putting out no new shit that I don't have. So let me just stack up on these motherfucking candles. There. And as much Dove fucking body moisturizing lotion I've got, I don't need this Bath and Body Works shit right now. Let me just get these candles, okay? A bitch like candles. So, other than that, we're going to get into this real talk because I don't want to keep you guys too long. And it's kind of late. It's 7.30. And I wanted to just get this done. So, that way, you know what I'm saying, I can edit it and 
be done with it okay so you guys already know the spiel if you need a real talk done about you go ahead and send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com my email will be down below in the description bar or the description box please when you are sending me an email regarding real talk that you address it in the subject line real talk so when I type it in my search it comes right up and then I can pull you up and then I can use your story so you guys make sure you send me those real talks because I'm almost well you know I'm almost out you know I get I get quite a few I don't get as many as I used to which is great because I guess I figure I've helped everybody or I've done what I've could and um, I don't know if I don't get, continue to get any more real talks then I guess real talk will not be canceled but it'll go on vacation for a minute you know what I'm saying but I hope you guys like the new backdrop. I ordered this from Amazon. For those who have asked me where do I get my backdrops, they are from Rose Gal, Rose Wholesale, um, and Gamis.com, which is the China-based websites where I do the clothes hauls for. They have a load of them. They have all different sizes, and they're fairly so cheap. Um, of course, there is a wait time, but this one I actually bought three days ago from Amazon. And it came, you know, because Amazon is quick. And it was only $10, $11. And um, they're not actually backdrops. They are tapestries, wall tapestries. So they're all fabric um, material. And I like them better than, I mean, I would like to get some regular backdrops. But the backdrops that other people may use, um, like solid colors, they are basically like, like a vinyl material or some are paper. And I don't have anywhere to, like, leave it up on my wall and store it so or hang it like you can't really hang those so for me this is the easier method these are also cheaper and if you don't have anywhere to store them you could always fold them up and put them somewhere but I use a clothes rack to do these and I just leave them all hanging on there and I know I need to do a video I did actually do a video of it but the quality just the way I, it just didn't come out great to me so I'm gonna do it over and I'm gonna show you guys how I rig everything up so that way you know you guys that want to use these tapestries will um, be able to and how you rig it up but um, I think I like the tapestries because like I said they're really cheap if you go on like rosegal.com or rose wholesale or a gamis if you type in and you go to the home decor section you just look up a, look up wall and let's say wall tapestries and they come in all different sizes and they're so cheap and of course there is a weight but there's so many of them that it's just like overwhelming to look um, but I trust me when I tell you it's so worth it to get them from there especially if you can wait and you've already got yourself a nice collection um, but I just wanted something new really really quick so this was what I got from Amazon and definitely when you're on Amazon check because this same one somebody wanted thirty two dollars for and then I just kept looking I put it in my wish list but I kept looking and then I seen it again from another person selling it for eleven ninety nine same size same exact everything so um yeah, I like eleven ninety nine better, hunties. But yeah, so let's get into this real talk, you guys. Of okay. hi, and I know my shirts don't go with the real talk, but I don't really care. Huh? 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 What? Huh? 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 All right, you guys. So. Hey, Miss April, love you and your videos. I have written to you in the past and always appreciate your time and advice. This email is all about dealing with hair loss and transitioning to wigs. If you don't consider this real talk, no problem. I just appreciate your advice and perspective on the matter. You can call me Hannah. I'm 30 years old. I'm a 30-year-old white woman, just to clarify the hair type. And my hair has been thinning for a while now. In the past two years, it's gotten especially bad with every sparse areas with very sparse areas and bald spots where you can actually see my scalp. This past, this past March, I got to my breaking point and decided to start wearing wigs. Watching your videos as well as others, I've educated myself and I've bought several good synthetic wigs. Using the tips and tricks I've learned, I'm pretty confident I've done a fairly good job making my wigs look okay. I've been wearing wigs since April now. However, I'm having a hard time dealing with it. I don't know why I'm so embarrassed to wear a wig. I know a lot of women choose to wear wigs whether they are dealing with hair loss or not. My husband and those close to me know I wear a wig, and they don't care. If we were at home, I am comfortable enough to not wear a wig around them. 
I worry about people knowing I'm wearing a wig. Every time I go out, I obsess that people will notice or even say something to me about it. I don't understand why I'm so ashamed. I want to get over my fears and worries, but I know, but I don't know how to accept it. I'd love to hear what you have to say and help me better deal with this transition. Thanks. Okay, so. Hannah. So Hannah is dealing with just basically feeling like, you know, she's basically obsessed and paranoid about wearing wigs out in public. I, I, let me tell y'all something. When I first started wearing a wig, right, Hannah, do not even feel bad. When I first started wearing a wig, this was back when Mumsy was like, probably just almost to be one. So, this was back in 2016. Now, I only wanted to start wearing a wig because I was watching Niecy Nash on TV. And I always seen her with all these different hairstyles. I did not know that they were wigs, okay? I did not know they were wigs. I just thought she had, like, all these different weaves. Now, mind you, I had never had a weave. My hair was so long, I didn't have a weave. But my hair would never keep a curl. I didn't want to cut it. I didn't want to dye it. But my hair would just, it was hard for me to keep a curl. So, after watching her all the time, I decided I'm going to wear a wig. And I started looking on these websites and stuff, hairsisters.com for wigs and stuff like that. And that's where I went. I met, actually, one of my good friends from um, hairsisters.com. And me and her have been friends to this day. Felicia, I know you're watching, girl. So, yes. Um, I love you. And I'm glad that we are friends and we still remain friends. But I met Felicia through HairSisters.com just from personal reviews that you would write about the wig. and You know, we would ask each other questions and stuff, and we would help one another out. So let me tell y'all, I finally decided to, this was, this was me on Hair Sisters. I had not bought a wig from them yet because I really didn't know what to look for and it was so overwhelming and I really didn't know what to look for online. This was like the first time for me ever. So I decided to venture out to this local beauty supply store. But, and I remember this beauty supply store because it's huge in Albany, New York and they have wigs all over the place. But I would go there to just get certain things like um, hair care products or cocoa butter. I would never go there and get hair. You know what I'm saying? Or I would go and get like the beauty supply store earrings and stuff like that. But never anything that had to do with hair. Um, one time I did go to get like some extension braids because we was going to Disney World and I wanted some extensions. I wanted the Bo Derek hairstyle. So anyway, I go into this beauty supply store. Now mind you, it's always crowded in there. A bitch picked the time when nobody would be up in the beauty supply store. Okay, when I say nobody... Nobody. So I went like about 9.30. They opened up at 8. So it had to be like 9 o'clock, 8.30ish. Because I wanted to check these wigs out. And I wanted to try them on. But I did not want anyone at all to see me trying a wig on. Like, I was so paranoid and so scared. It took me like two hours, no lie, to pick out these two wigs. And I don't know what the hell made me pick out this one particular one. I just remember, I don't remember the name of it, but it was black and it had a purple streak here. I don't, I don't know. But I also picked out a half wig. It was the Sensational Half Wig and it was the HZ, I can't remember, but Felicia, I know you remember. So if you remember which one it was, write it there because I bought like loads of the same half wig. Now, it took me two hours, and when somebody did come in the store, I would just kind of like shy away and get like in a corner and then act like I was doing something else. I didn't even want you to see me looking at the motherfucking wigs, okay? This is how paranoid I was. Now, when I finally put the wig on, the first wig that I wore was the half wig, all right? And I just wore it as a regular half wig, and I had my hair out, and I really didn't know what to do. So I just got a headband, and I just put it on like that. And it worked for me. Like, I, it worked for me really well. I wore it like that for a while. And then I, I just started seeing, like, okay, I don't want to keep wearing a headband. So I just started using, like, different things that I already had around the house, like perm rods to just blend my hair in the front. And... I was so particular about my wig because I was afraid that every time I would go outside, every fucking body would be staring at me like and pointing at me and just saying, she got a wig on. She got a wig on. 
You know, I felt like everybody in the motherfucking world would know that I had on a wig, okay? And I didn't want nobody to know this. Nobody. So I would make sure that my wig was on point forever, okay? And um, the funny thing about it was that one particular half wig, I probably had about six of them. I didn't really want to change the style up too much. And it kind of looked like this, but a little bit shorter. I didn't really want to change the style up too much because I didn't want nobody knowing that it was a wig. So I would wear like one particular style for like three months, okay? And I would just keep rewashing and rewashing and rewashing this wig. And it held up pretty damn good, okay? Um, and that was like my other fear of people knowing that I wore a wig so I would definitely just keep the same one all the time and I would never like venture out into colors because like I said I didn't want anybody to know that I was wearing a wig so when I finally decided to start doing YouTube um it had nothing to do about wigs it had to do about makeup and I don't even know why the fuck I decided to do makeup because a bitch can't do makeup for shit I'm not no booty guru but that's what I tried out now I remember people asking me in the video, like, you know, your hair looks so nice. Where, are, what, you know, is that a wig? Is it a weave? And if it is, can you show us? And I said I would be more than happy to show you guys. And me and my daughter Tati, Tati was like, oh, don't get on the internet showing people how to do no wig. Don't, don't put your wig on on the computer. And I was like, I know, right? I don't want nobody to see that. But I decided to do it. And it was like a great response. Now, I still didn't want y'all to know that I was wearing a wig. Like, maybe y'all on YouTube knew I was wearing a motherfucking wig. But I didn't want nobody at my job. And I didn't want nobody walking on the street to know that a bitch had a wig on. And, like, you did see people wearing wigs. Or maybe you didn't. Wigs weren't so popular as they are now. But, um, I don't know... I think like after a while, after like wearing them a couple of years, I just got over that. Like it is kind of hard in the beginning to wear a wig if you haven't because you have a fear. And maybe not everybody, but a lot of people have a fear of, I don't want nobody to know. But you know, the funny thing is some people say this and sometimes I even say this. I want the bitch to think I got a good ass weave versus a wig. But then it's like, why April? Either way, it's fake hair. Let me tell you something, Hannah. You cannot rush yourself into getting over something. You have to gradually take that shit into steps and take that shit into your own hands. Like, don't let the shit fear you and, like, push you away. Because, trust me when I tell you, wigs can be so much fun and so amazing. Now, you still need to care for your hair, um, but... And that's my one issue. I really don't care for it as much as I should, so it has thinned out a lot. And I have lost my edges and shit like that. But wigs can be like a beautiful thing, okay? Like seriously, like you can be somebody totally different every motherfucking day if you want to. You can have a look different every motherfucking day if you want to. And trust me, Hannah, when I tell you, don't feel bad about wearing a wig. And don't worry about anybody looking at you funny and thinking you got a wig on. Because let me tell you, if you are working and you are doing your tips and tricks, and you make sure your wig is on point, then bitch, don't worry about it. Because there's some bitches out there that I see on a daily basis that don't do no tips and tricks and don't give two fucks if their wig is looking good. Or maybe they think it looks good because they dressed up and they just think it looks cute, but I know you ain't cute with that boxy-ass hairline. But either way, here nor there, um, you ain't the only motherfucker that's wearing a wig. And I guarantee you that the, ne the next bitch wig probably don't look nowhere near as good as yours. So, with that being said, it's, you know, we have to get over shit in our own time. And I look at it like this. There is somebody somewhere, everywhere, wearing a wig or some type of hair extension or hair piece, you know? And, like, wigs are not just about hair loss and things like that. Wig is an accessory. Like, seriously, when I say that a wig is an accessory, it's a fucking accessory. Like, like these motherfucking earrings. Um, there's certain particular hair that I would wear with this shirt. Like, I had on my blue wig. I don't think I would want to wear my blue wig with this because I just don't feel like a color scheme matches. So, I put this wig on because I felt like it went better with my outfit. Like, hairstyles do go better with certain outfits. And so, that's how we accessorize as women. You know what I mean? And wigs are not supposed to make you nervous and scared. They're supposed to make you feel comfortable. 
And as long as you are comfortable within your own skin and your own self, sweetheart, you won't worry about none of these bitches looking at you funny and saying you got on a wig. I wish a motherfucker would say to me, you know, let me tell y'all, a motherfucker did actually. And I had to let her know. Now, this was like a couple of months ago. I had on that burgundy red wig that RPG show sent me. And I was at Sam's Club with Mumsy and Nay. And was Tinky. I can't remember if Tinky was there or not. I think he was. And so I'm in the produce section. And this black girl and her man. I don't know if that was her man or not. But she seemed a little bit young minded. Like a little touched. But she wasn't. She was just ignorant. So, But she was younger than me. Okay. She had to be in her 20s. Now, this is what I would do if I liked someone's hair. You, ha Your hair looks really nice. And that's it. That's all I would say is your hair looks really nice. Did this bitch come up to me and was like. Now, first of all, she started smiling and giggling like a mile away. Like, I seen her and I'm like, does she know me? Because why is she coming towards me like this? Then she comes up to me and she was like, oh, your hair looks cute. Where did you get it from? I was like, excuse me, what? She was like, where did you buy your hair from? I said, what makes you think that I bought this? And she just gave me this look. I said, I didn't buy it. And her weed was jacked up. And she was like, um... Because I didn't buy it. You know, it sent to me. And she was like, well, I, you know, basically trying to say something. And I was like, you, you probably want a wig. You need a new one. And because, and I, and I, I didn't have to go that route with her. But her, her, her weave was kind of jacked the fuck up. Like, she, she needed a new one. If I could have took that off and gave her mine, I would have. But it's a way that people go about shit. And, like, some shit takes me off guard. And I don't mind telling people I got on a wig, especially if you come at me in a nice way. Like, if you was just to say, girl, I love your hair. I like it. And I'd be like, oh, thank you, girl. That's a wig. That's how, and I do that shit all the time now because I don't care. And you know what they say? For real? I don't like them wig wear. But if you coming to me like, oh, your hair look cute. Where you buy it from? Like, First of all, bitch, how you know I even bought this shit? How you know that it's even growing out, growing out of my motherfucking scalp? Like, don't assume that a bitch bought this shit just because your raggedy ass shit you bought and you need to fucking throw the fuck out. You you know what I'm saying? Like, come on now. There's a way to go go about it. But, um, and I challenge anybody. Like, I don't, I, me now to the point, I guess, I don't really care if people know that I wear a wig because I'm on YouTube. So everybody knows that I wear a wig. Every fucking body. There are some people to this day that think that a bitch don't have hair. Like, motherfuckers, I got hair. Okay? I have hair. Like, right to here. My hair is, like, probably shoulder length, you know, because it used to be in the middle of my back length, but I had cut it off. Um, like, about a year and a half ago, two years ago, I cut it. Um, but I have hair. I'm not bald-headed because I wear wigs. That's just because this is what the fuck I want to do. And because I don't like to do my own hair. And plus, my hair is thinner, so I can't, like, do all of these crazy styles and shit. So, I like to wear a wig. It's accessory. But it took me a minute... Like, it took me a minute to get it, it get really, really comfortable with it. And now, like, I'll be driving. Like, I remember, I'll never forget, one of my um, my Tahoe I had at the time out here, the AC went out on it. And I had to drive home from work where I used to work at when I first moved here. And people was at the fucking railroad crossing. The, the thing, the railroads was coming, the trains was coming. So they put the thing down for the rail to train the pass. That shit seemed like it was like 10 to 15 minutes, okay? It was like 110 degrees outside. A bitch don't have AC, so of course I got the windows rolled down so all the fucking heat can come in. And I'm sweating because I got this full closure cap wig on that's long and I'm thinking I'm cute. I couldn't take it anymore. I snatched that motherfucker off in the car and sat there with my wig cap on like... When we going? Because I need to get home. I'm fucking hot. Okay? And that's how I be feeling now. Like, I don't... Let me tell you something. I don't give a fuck if somebody be like, Oh, you got on a wig. I'd be like, yeah, I know I do. I bet you wish you had this motherfucker. Or, or say things like, Bitch, you bald headed. Oh, bitch, I got a lot of hair underneath this motherfucking wig. Probably more than your ass got. You know what I'm saying? So, it's... It's all about being comfortable. And this is what I say to myself. Stop worrying about what other people think and what you're doing or what you're wearing because that's none of their business. This bitch probably wish she had a wig, okay? Or this bitch probably wish she had a wig. Either way, honey, get out of your com get out of that comfort zone a little bit because you have already quite wearing wigs and explore because there are so many different types of wigs and styles that I guarantee you, Hannah, you'll be addicted and you'll have a whole huge, humongous collection, all right? 
me personally i love wigs i feel like they're a great accessory and i feel like they're great for style and things um and it just allows you to express yourself um do i get scared i don't i don't really get nervous to this day but i'm not paranoid either but i i do check my wig out from time to time in the freezer section through the door or whatever because yeah i don't care if you know i got on a wig but yeah i don't really want you to know i got on a wig so i try to make sure that it looks correct at all times um but hannah wigs are amazing Trust me when I tell you, you'll love them. And when you get so used to them, you'll feel so comfortable that you won't even give two shits about what anybody thinks. It just takes time. And I feel like this. The more that you wear it, the more comfortable you'll be. Why don't you try to go to like a beauty supply store? Now, I know you said you're a white woman. That's great. But if you can go to a beauty supply store like the Hood Beauty Supply Store that's owned by the Chinese people, okay? Because at the beauty supply, they should call it a BBS, Black Beauty Supply Store. BBSS, Black Beauty Supply Store. Because majority of people that go to the beauty supply stores that are like, you know, beauty supply stores owned by the Asians are Black Americans, okay? They are us. We are they. And we are the ones that give them the most business. But I promise you, Hannah, if you were to go into one of those, a synthetic wig is a synthetic wig. It's just silky fiber. So that shit will work for you. As long as you ain't putting on no kinky straight motherfucker or no kinky hair, then you good. But I, if I were you, I would go into one of the hood beauty supply stores. Try to find one. Just put type in beauty supply on Google. Um, and make sure it's not Sally's. Okay, honey. And just type one in and go into the store. I promise you, you'll see all type of bitches, busted bitches, cute bitches, ugly bitches, old bitches, young bitches, at the fucking try-on counter where all the wig stations is at, trying on some motherfucking wigs. They could care less about any of these people seeing them do wig reviews. Yes, boo? They eat food. Where's your food? No. Why? They don't make it. Who don't make it? Me. Where's mommy? My groupie. Okay, well, I gotta do my video. Would you like to say hi? Yeah. You, you gotta come this way. Why? I go that way. No, 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 no. This way. Here, you can come say hi. Now look at the camera. Hi. Say hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. What do you tell them? You eating your food? No. You you gonna eat your food? Okay. All right. You go eat your food. Okay. Okay. What are you eating? Uh -huh. Powder. Powder? Powder. What are you eating? Eating my food. What kind of food you got? Uh, Lello. Powder. Where's AJ? AJ fell. Oh, AJ went home? No. AJ cleaned up the house. Oh, AJ cleaned up the house? He cleaned up. Oh, okay. Well, let Grandma do her video, okay? Hi, moo, moo. All right, can you get out now? Yeah. All right, give me a kiss. I love you. My chocolate milk. Oh yeah, get your chocolate milk. Close my door. Right, right now. Yeah, right now. That's my baby. Not literally my baby, but that's my grandson. So you know. It takes time. When we start doing new things to ourselves, it takes time, you know. It took me, let me tell you, it took me a minute to wear a blonde wig, Hannah, for real. And now I wear it with no problem. But it also took me time to be able to wear blue hair and red hair. Like, I didn't want to go outside wearing those colors because I just felt like everybody was going to be looking at me and knowing that I had on a wig and pointing the finger at me. But when I had on my blue wig the other day outside... People were like, oh, girl, your hair like nice. I love your color. So, you know, it takes time and you will eventually get used to it. But don't give up. Just make sure that your hair is slayed. And like I said, go to the beauty supply stores in the hood and you will find a humongous selection of wigs that you will love. And you'll sit there and stand there with these other women that are looking and trying on wigs too and they could care less stop worrying about you and your wigs because i guarantee you these same people that you may think that got on uh, looking at your wigs probably got some in the stash at home too and then there's a lot of times that people wish that they could wear a wig or they wish that they could blend their wig like that it's no fear it just takes time i'm not telling you to jump out the window and start wearing crazy colors but i guarantee you that 
the wig game is so popular and it's so trendy and it's worth it to just be able to just throw on a wig and it could be for accessory it can be for hair loss either way you need to be comfortable in what you do and just take it a little bit of time and over time you will really really like be able to technique like be able to just like blend your techniques will get so good and just like out of this world if you continue at it that you will be on every wig site trying to find like the perfect fucking wig I guarantee you so just take baby steps and just wear the same one a few times or like for a month that's how I got comfortable was wearing the same style for a while and then a bitch got like well let me tell you something I could be pink tomorrow short long whatever tomorrow I don't give a fuck no more because I don't give a fuck you know what I'm saying you sometimes we gotta have that attitude like I don't give a fuck attitude because it works it actually does work to have a get I don't give a fuck attitude that shit definitely do work girl I'm telling you trust me so you guys we're gonna move on to the next one i am so sleepy right now like seriously i'm so tired i have to go take some more medication so this is gonna be the last one because you know i've talked long enough and i'm so tired and i have to take some more medication so um <clears throat> hi april my name is michelle and i just need some relationship advice you are so real and tell it how it is and girl that's what i need right now i'm turning 27 this year my husband is 47 this year as you probably noticed we have a huge age gap between us we have two kids age three and nine months we we met in an unconventional way but we do love and care about each other very much unfortunately we only have a few things in common we are total opposites of one another I am more laid back and he's uptight. I stay at home with the kids and he goes to work, working hard for his family. The thing is this, the thing is his job is stressful and when he comes home from work he takes it out on me. He nitpicks me about the little things like having dirty dishes in the sink or laundry not folded, not immediately putting a trash bag in the garbage, can just get um, just a little things, tiny little things to nitpick at me about. When we get into arguments, he wants to bring up the fact that I'm so much younger than he is and treats me like some kid. I'm having to constantly remind him that I'm grown and I'm not a little child that doesn't know how to do things. When it's cold outside and we go out, he always is asking me if I brought socks for the baby. By writing this to you and I'm reading it back, I guess it doesn't sound as bad, lol. But the little comments he makes makes me feel like I'm an incompetent mother and wife. Sometimes he makes me feel like a dumb teenager. I can't help my age. I admit I do need to grow up more. I'm not on his level of maturity. I'm just taking care of my kids and house the best that I can. And it would be nice if he came home and kissed me and asked me how my day was instead of getting upset over nothing or upset over something dumb. I guess what I'm writing to you for is to ask <clears> him. <throat> How do I show him my age doesn't define me? Maybe we, maybe he feels bad that he's older and he talks and he likes to talk about politics, which I love hearing his opinions. But I'm not an expert at the matter, so obviously I can't keep up with him on that topic. I don't know what, I don't know what I'm really asking for. How can I make our relationship work? Do I try to keep the house in tip-top shape? How can I perfect myself to please my husband? How do you keep your man happy in general? Thank you for hearing me out, April. Sorry if this email sounds all over the place. I should have wrote to you when I was. I, I should have wrote to you when I am mad at my husband. LOL. Because then I can give you a more detailed description of my situation. And she's so cute, and her little babies are so freaking cute. The three-year-old is so dang gone cute. Oh my god, the smile is so fucking adorable. Oh my god. That is the cutest little smile I've ever seen. You just see, oh, and she's so pretty too. They look like you, girl. That is the cutest little smile. Oh my God, got a little head tilted. I'm not sure if it's a girl or a boy because she didn't stay for the both of them. Um, it kind of looks, they look like they could be both, but either way, they are adorable. And that smile on your three-year-old is to die for. So cute. Why doesn't Tinky smile like that? It takes forever for me to get a picture from him. He's constantly moving and stuff. Like, ah, still. But, so, Michelle, 
Michelle is 27 and her husband is 47. That's 20 years difference. And she don't she don't work. She stay home. She take care of the baby. She take, she's a housewife basically. She cleans. She cooks. She take care of the kids and shit. And he go to work. But when he come home, he always nitpicking at her. Why is there dirty dishes in the sink? Why is the garbage bag not put in? Why is the laundry not folded? Why isn't why isn't this? Why isn't that? Why isn't this? Why isn't that? Like, dude. Just because you leave the house, don't you think it's stressful enough for me to be here with a three-year-old and a nine-month-old and I got to do all of this shit? It gets very hard when you have a nine-month-old and a three-year-old. You cannot expect this woman to do every fucking thing when she got this three-year-old who's running into shit and running all over the place and getting into shit. Trust me, I have a three-year-old grandson. I know this. It's a fact. And then you got a nine-month-old who is crawling around probably and crying about shit and wants to be held and fed. So you got all of this going on and... He expects you to have all of these tasks done when he comes home. What the fuck are you? I dream a genie? Let me tell you something. You, you just said that you guys love each other very much and care for one another. Obviously, you do. But to me, it seems like, why is he being the nitpicker and picking at you? That's like a form of bullying to me. Now, I'm not saying to leave the man because I don't, you know, I'm not going to condone anybody to leave their man. I'm not going to tell anybody to leave their man. But that is a form of bullying. And regardless of the age difference, he's the one that picked you. If he had an issue with your age, then why the fuck did he marry you in the first place? You know what I'm saying? We need to ask him that. But, okay, so what? You didn't have the dishes done. Or so what the laundry wasn't folded. Dude, just because you work outside of the home doesn't mean that I don't work inside of the home. Being a single mother, or excuse me, being a housewife and a mother of children is so much work. It is a 24 hour, 7 days a week job. Non motherfucking stop, okay? And some men fail to realize that. Just because you're at home with your children all day does not mean that you are not, you know, motivated. You know what I'm saying? You're not um, doing anything with your time and in life. You're not handling your business. It doesn't mean that. Like me per se, I'm I don't I, I'm home every day. I I work. You know, this is my job and this is my job and I do this. And trust me, I don't sit here. I wish I could just motherfucking sit here and do nothing all day. Maybe just for like one or two days, I would be like in my bliss. But I never have a dull moment and I'm always doing something. And that's probably the reason why I'm so tired and I'm just not able to eat and take care of myself like I should. But it's hard being a housewife and it's definitely hard being a mother. And when someone is nitpicking at you and coming at you and just like bombarding you and just throwing blows at you and throwing blows at you and throwing blows at you, it gets to be very hurtful and aggravating. And you're right, Michelle. He should come home and ask you how your day was. Like, why Why won't you ask me how my day was? Just because I, I don't go outside the home, don't you think that because I have to deal with a nine-month-old and a three-year-old that my day might be a little hectic and stressful? Who the hell wants to hear a baby crying all the time? And who the hell wants to reach, or excuse me, run after a three-year-old all the time? I'm pretty sure that Michelle gets tired because I know I do, okay? I know the fuck that I do. But here's the thing. He's nitpicking at you. Is he giving you any positive comments, compliments? Because it doesn't seem like it is. It's happening. And you need to sit down and have a good conversation with this man before it gets out of hand. Because sometimes what I notice is when men start doing shit like this, like nitpicking at you, why you ain't do this, why you ain't do this, why you ain't do this, that's, their, that's the startup of them starting to be like abusive. Okay, this is what I've noticed just from like personal life and people that I know and just watching them Lifetime movies that this is what happens like and I know that this happens in real life like you know it goes from this and then it just progresses slowly and honestly you do not want it to progress like that to the point where he he feels it's okay to now disrespect you and put you down because in a form he is disrespecting you and putting you down but for one talking about your age he knew how old you were when he was hitting that pussy. He knew how old you were when you married his ass. So there's no reason to bring up my age. We all know how old the fuck I am. I don't need you to remind me of that. But, yeah, it's great. He works hard, sweetheart. But you work just as hard to keep your family together also. And the thing about the politics and you're not on his level of maturity, thank God, because his level of maturity right now, I don't see it really going anywhere. Because if you can come home and start picking on somebody, that's not mature. That is not being concerned in, in regards to anybody else's feelings but his own. So, his level of maturity is like this big right now, Michelle. For real. 
me personally, if that were I, I, I'd probably go the fuck off. But you know what? We all different in our own ways. And going off does not solve anything. Like, you're not going to get anything achieved by going the fuck off on this man. What you should do is have a nice conversation with him. Like, a nice long conversation with him. And if you don't feel like you can, and you may feel like a little nervous, which is not a good feeling, especially if you are married, then if he takes, like, a lunch bag to work or, like, a briefcase, what you should do when he's not around, like, when he's at work, you write him a nice long letter and you explain to him how you feel in the letter and let him know. So that way when he gets to work and he opens up, he can read it. And sometimes being able to read something versus hearing it out of someone's mouth makes it a lot more sincere. It also allows the person to reread it and just know where you're coming from. You know what I mean? Because when we're arguing, we're just spewing words at one another. Or when we're having a discussion, we're just spewing words at one another. And I guarantee you that this is not like a regular, hey girl, how you doing? discussion it's more or less you telling him how you feel and what's been bothering you and so that probably is going to get into like a heated discussion so sometimes like just being able to write something down like write him a letter and let him know express your feelings to him you know what i mean because you can come at him and you can have a conversation with him and he may get into his feelings about feeling like oh your tone he didn't like the way you said this or your tone he didn't like the way you said that when in reality it ain't nothing like that so i me personally well, me personally, I'm a bitch sometimes, so I'm going to let you have it. But if it were me, I think that I would just write the letter out and see if he responds to it. And if he doesn't, you know, within that evening, you just say to him the next day, Hey, babe, did you did you ever get a chance to read the letter? Did you see the letter that I left you? You know what I mean? That way he can respond, and that way you can bring the, the topic up. It, it may come off as a little bit to some people like, Oh, I would just come up to him. But sometimes you can't approach the situation like that all the time. And sometimes it's best to just ease it in so that way you can avoid conflict, okay? And just give him the letter. And like I said, being able to read something versus hearing it sometimes works out a lot better. Because let me tell you, you can sit here and tell me something that makes you feel like, oh, I did something to you. And I'm going to take it one type of way. But if I'm able to read it, I might get a little upset when I first read it. But I guarantee you that I'll go back and read it again. And then I start feeling some type of way like, damn. And it allows you to think more too. Like if he's reading this letter, it allows him to think more versus you talking to him and him on the defensive side. Because that's what it would be more like if you're having a conversation with him. It would be on the defensive side. And I think that you really need to write him a letter and let him know. Express your feelings and concerns. Let him know like how it makes you feel. You don't have to feel because you're 27 and he's 47 that you're not on his maturity level. Because it has nothing to do with age. It has nothing to do with age. It has to do as the person we are. And not only that, you know what I'm saying? But it's great that you incorporate yourself in conversations about politics. Because, bitch, I'm 44 and I don't even know what the fuck politics is about. And I don't really care to know. Okay? I'm going to be real with you guys. A bitch don't give a fuck about none of that shit. Okay? I don't. I, I don't give a fuck about it. But if you're interested in hearing about the shit and he's spewing it to you and telling you about it, then the least he could do is listen to what the fuck you got to say. Why ain't there no dishes done? Maybe because I was carrying your kids all day and tending for them. Next time he asks you why ain't this done and why that ain't done, just say, you know what, babe, I meant to do it, but being that um, the kids were crying and I had to tend to them more, I didn't get around to it. But is there something that you need? Now, he might think that you being sarcastic or smart, but that is a way to tell him, like, listen, I got these kids here and I have to tend to them all day long. So, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get it done, you know. I, too, have a good day. It would be nice if you would ask me how my day is. Shit, if you in the house all day with two little kids, that shit will drive you crazy if you don't have no motherfucking life. You should ask her how your, her motherfucking day is. Because, shit, I would be going crazy. I go crazy just sitting in here with these motherfuckers, my kids. For real. Like, that, to me, is a form of abuse. Like, okay, I get it. You need your underwear washed. What, you need your coffee mug washed, too? Write him a letter and let, let him know your your feelings because the type of person that he seems like he is, he's just going to be on the defensive side about whatever you say to him. You could be like, it's raining outside a little bit and he catch an attitude. You're not incompetent. You're not stupid. You're not immature. So let's, let's make sure that, you know what I'm saying? We also need to inform him that I'm maybe 27, but I'm able to do a lot of things with myself and I'm very mature. 
don't feel like you less of a person because you're 27 years old and you're 20 years old. But I'm going to be honest. Some men, when they that age, they so set in their ways that there's really no way to change them. And it's like either you suck it up or you, 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 you keep it pushing. You know, never let no man, like seriously though. I know you love each other and all that good stuff. That's great. But never let no man get you to the point where you're depressed and you're stressed out because of the way that they're treating you. You know what I'm saying? We don't allow that shit. If that's the way he wants to continue to act, then allow him to act that way on his own. But do not allow this motherfucker to mistreat you and keep continuously bullying you. Because for one, you are the mother of his children. For two, you are his wife. And for three, you in that house all day long. God knows what the fuck he's doing out there. But you still are entitled to that respect. And if he cannot give you that respect, sweetheart, then maybe it's your time to think about, do I really want to spend my life with this old ass man? Like I said, they are very set in their ways. And what it seems like he's trying to do is mold you into what he wants you to do. Which is not cool. Okay? You are your own person. And he is his own. And you do not deserve to be mistreated. Plain blank period. I wouldn't allow it. So, first of all, don't allow him to continuously do this to you. Because this is just signs of abuse. This is what I'm feeling. Because why are you nitpicking at her? She is a girl. She's a female. Stop it. I mean, that's just my opinions on it, and that's just my take on it, you know. But I would definitely say something to him about it in a letter, put it in his lunch bag or wherever, and, you know, write out your feelings. And don't be all aggressive and nasty, and don't be boo-hoo mushy either, because they can take that as being vulnerable. And we as women never want to be feeling like we're vulnerable to men. I know I don't, because I, I don't. I don't. I'll shut my husband's shit down real quick, okay? He will apologize to me for something, and I will not call him back in, like, for days. I won't text him back. I'm, like, over the whole, like, mushy, mushy cry thing, because I'm not going to do that. We've already been through that. I'm a grown-ass woman, and I've been through enough. And if that's how you want to act, bro, go right the fuck ahead, okay? Hmm. So, um, Michelle, just leave him a letter. And let's see how he responds to that. And you can always fucking email me and tell me how he responds to that. But, you guys, I'm going to go because I'm so sleepy. I feel like I'm dozing off here. Plus, I didn't eat. I really, I think I'm about to use DoorDash and get me some Chipotle, okay? I love Chipotle. Chip Chipotle, okay? DoorDash gave me a free month's worth of delivery. So, a bitch about to use that. Because, like, I could drive the um, Chipotle. And if I drive the Chipotle, I'll get more stuff on my stuff. But, yeah, because, the yeah, they're better. Mm. I'm going to try the online order. Hopefully it works now. But, you guys, I love you. Stay diva and delicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. Thumbs this video up. And I will see you guys in a soon-to-come video. This is still the same here from bestlacewigs.com. I love this wig hunting. Y'all. <laughs> What? Mm. Damn. Mm. Damn. Mm. Damn. Mm. Real attraction.